Kenny Kraft, I'm an architect and, uh, in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, but I've uh, been growing our work in Colorado. Um, so I, I've come up with a term to describe the architecture of today of uh, mediocritecture. Um, you know, <laughs> it's uh, you know, barely adequate, run the mill. Um, you know, meanwhile, the, the, what architecture can be, you know, a, a symbol of our culture and society. You know, the question is, you know, do, do what, what we're building today is it what we want our, our culture to be represented by? You know, we used to be able to build just amazing, beautiful things. You know, this example on the right, you know, a, just a, a simple kind of classical cornice. You know, something on the right is, is acceptable today, and you know, in today's neighborhoods. You know, the window has become a cartoon of what a window used to be. Um, you know, we used to build great urban buildings right up the street. Um, that you know now it's, it's sort of garage with you know, how many gables can you fit on the front and um, you know a chimney is now made with, with vinyl siding you know rather than beautiful brick and um, you know there's there's been there's been something lost in, in the knowledge of what we used to have um, the word tradition traditional has you know it has bad connotations somehow to some people but um, in many ways all it ever really meant was an inheritance to transmit <laughs> from the past you know something to the next generation what the previous generation had learned so that the new generation doesn't have to start from scratch. Um, you know, traditionally, the, the climate, the culture, the, the materials that were available all you know informed the architecture. And it was simple. It was uh, you know stone, the you know responding to hurricanes, you know responding to the, the forces of nature. You know things were learned over generations. You know trial and error. Um, it, it was based on human scale, the, the proportions of humanity. You know symmetry. You know, again, when materials were, were available, and, and there was a diversity all around the world of, of you know, what the distinctness that comes from the, these variations in climate and culture, you know, things had meaning, you know, sim symbolical meaning. Um, and there's something about urbanism and traditional architecture that when, when there's a, a common language, essentially, that allows multiple buildings on the same street to actually talk to each other, to speak the same language, um, that is, it's not an obvious, you know, there's, there's something about it that also allows, that allows variety and variation. So how did we get to where we are today? Uh, you know, not a urbanism 101, but, the, you know, the, we reinvented the way we built cities. We reinvented, you know, how things should be done. We, we reinvented, you know, architecture. We basically threw out all the, the what we used to know. You know, we, we threw it all out and kind of started from scratch. And, uh, you know, academia, the architecture profession, profession essentially has abandoned the past and got all caught up in, you know, creativity, the obsession with creativity and, you know, you know, reinventing the wheel and what can be done that has never really done been done before, you know, forsaking all context and, you know, cultural context or um, any, anything. And then on the flip side, because the architects have abandoned us, you know, we have the, the production builders and the, you know, designers that are just, you know, they're trying to do traditional architecture because that's actually what the people want. But they really have no idea how to do it because nobody teaches it anymore. And you know, we have builders like D.R. Horton, the biggest builder in the country, building 19,000 19, units per year. Um, there is hope. It's it's not all um, bad. I'd say there's there's been a revival, you know, along with with new urbanism in the you know, late 70s, early 80s, sort of re, you know rediscovering urbanism, rediscovering traditional architecture, and the, the principles of an architecture that is sympathetic to urbanism. And um, you know, to me. You know, now, you know, because of this legacy of this sort of this revival, we can actually point to dozens of successful, beautiful places where not just the urbanism is done well, but, but the architecture is, is, is human scaled and, and, and beautiful. And, you know, we, you know, we started out just sort of trying to actually learn how to build it again. And now we can actually, you know, now we're doing beautiful things. And, and to me, there, you know, I'm, I'm, as an architect, I'm very inspired by the, you know, those practitioners out there. I kind of refer to like the best of the best. And they're actually, you know, they, they are rooted in a traditional knowledge, but yet they have that sort of modern, they can, they can even you know, can bring, bring back the modern spirit and, you know, have that, 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 that junction between, you know, a, a grounding and, and traditional classical understanding and knowledge, but yet the, the freedom to kind of incorporate, you know, creativity just, just as well, you know. Traditional architecture was, was really never, um, you know, inherently opposed or in conflict with creativity and innovation. It always sort of worked naturally with it. Um, you know, now you know, there's, they're really, and the, and the new urbanism has become a testing ground for how to build urban buildings that can be good neighbors with each other, but 
but also can can have you know be, be beautiful and be, be progressive and, and creative and um, you know it's 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 an exciting it are exciting examples and um, you know academia being one of the biggest sources of sort of how the, the you know the, the architects and designers sort of left us all behind there are some shining lights and a number of schools uh, Notre Dame most notably that where students actually get out of school and have a beautiful portfolio that your grandma would appreciate, not just an architect. Um, you know, and there's the, some of the big fundamental problems, and to me, initiatives that you know that, that need to be worked on. It, um, like Home Depot and Lowe's, you know, I consider them the, the purveyors of, of bad taste and the purveyors of you know low quality, cheap materials. And you know, they're, they're bad is the new normal. You know, we, nobody even really knows what is good anymore because you. Can you know, if, if you can buy it, you know, why, why would somebody sell something that's bad? So, you know, there's there's strategies I think that can be leveraged more. You know, historic districts, people recognize that there's there's beautiful places and they try to protect them. And, you know, these these kind of guidelines and, and rules and you know pattern books and, and things to be able to maintain. Um, and you know, to affect that world of the the, the builder that, that doesn't really know traditional architecture, we, we now know we, we've kind of rediscovered we re, we've learned. You know, there, it's not all about cost. There are things that you can do differently, simply by just getting the details right that to make a place beautiful, and it doesn't necessarily have to cost more. Um, and something I'm, you know, excited, passionate about. You know, there's there's kind of initiatives and and you know, the concept of you know getting back to affecting academia and the profession, um, and that you know re, re you know acknowledging that there there is there is great creativity and innovation even in the confines of in traditional and classical architecture, so, you know, not trying to say that uh, it is the, the end all only way to to approach architecture in the urbanism, but um, to me, the, the hope is that we are we would we would take seriously what, what the kind of places we're building and the, the quality that we're actually creating. That it's that it's not just the the, the cheap uh, you know stuff that that we see too often today. <laughs>